We're back at Epcot! Opened October 1st, 1982 as a kind of permanent World's Fair combined with a showcase for the possibilities of the future. It's always been one of the most unusual and interesting theme parks in the world. And now as we head towards its upcoming 40th anniversary, it's about to get even more interesting. Because Walt Disney World's second theme park is already undergoing a transformation so huge it leaves no stone unturned. Literally! On the ground beneath our feet, you can see the patches left over from the removal of the gigantic Leave a Legacy Project stones, which have now been successfully removed as they transform the entire Epcot entrance. Just look at this concept artwork here. It looks like we're getting topiary Disney characters, brand new planters, even some much needed shade trees. And best of all, it looks like Epcot's getting a brand new entrance fountain, whose design actually comes from the original Epcot fountain, transforming this this view here into this. Oh my gosh. It looks so good. When I first saw this particular piece of concept artwork, my jaw hit the floor. Look at that, the new old school fountain, some kind of new shiny lights on Spaceship Earth. People are taking selfies. It's going to be epic. And it's not just the entrance that's getting a makeover. Changes are coming to the entire park. Even the Epcot logo is changing. I believe starting exactly one month from when I'm standing here on October 1st. Epcot's 37th anniversary. Epcot's logo will change from this crazy thing they've been using to the one we just saw them unveil at D23. A logo that looks almost exactly like the original from 1982, minus of course the word center. Now since 1982, Epcot has always been divided into two areas. The World Showcase featuring all those crazy country pavilions and this front part of the park with all its sort of edutaining pavilions designed to represent our Earth and the history and promise of future technology along with these two massive central buildings known as Communicore East. East and Communicore West, all collectively known as Future World. Now Future World, especially these massive Communicore buildings in the center, were always meant to show guests cutting edge and next generation future technology. Even up till just a few years ago, these buildings were trying to keep up with showcasing the latest and greatest innovations and inventions, which is why it was known as Inventions, get it? But over the years, with the advent of the internet and these little computers in everyone's pocket, it became possible for all of us to see and discover and hear about new technology long before it was able to be displayed in a theme park. And as the equipment in our pockets became way more technically advanced than the stuff in here, it became pretty obvious Epcot was not going to be able to keep up with educating us about new technology. And they need to shift the focus more towards entertainment. Basically, this is all a long way of saying that Future World couldn't keep up with the future. Over the years, it started to look more and more like five years ago world or ten years ago world. And that is why they just announced that they are doing away with with Future World altogether. Future World East with test track and mission space is becoming world discovery. Future World West with the land, journey to imagination with Figment and Nemo at the living seas will become world nature. And this full central core will become known as world celebration and it's going to look completely different. I know, I know, it's all a little bit confusing, but to reiterate, instead of world showcase and one big future world, we're now going to have the world showcase, world discovery, world celebration celebration and world nature. A whole new world. Now over here in the brand new world discovery, it really will be a whole new world. Guests over here will be able to ride a sweet brand new roller coaster, Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. Apparently the old universe of energy building will become the Galaxarium, kind of like a planetarium talking about Earth and Xandar. And then the Guardians are going to show up and all heck's supposed to break loose. Dude, it's going to be sweet. Not only is it going to have a reverse launch, but the ride vehicle itself is supposed to swivel 360 degrees to point you towards different story elements. I'm guessing somewhat similarly to the Crush Coaster in Disneyland Paris. Next up and next door to that, the old Wonders of Life Pavilion, completely renamed and rethemed as the Play Pavilion, will feature what they're calling a digital metropolis, an interactive city quote unquote bursting with games, activities, and experience. There's supposed to be some sort of water balloon fight thing with Huey Dewey. Louie and Webby, some kind of attraction where you help Edna Mode rid the world of horrible fashion. Uh, she'll probably have a lot to say about me. The details are all still coming out bit by bit, but so far it looks like that's gonna be amazing. Alright, alright, we're going next door for three in a row. Now Mission Space just recently got a mission makeover, but apparently they didn't feel like stopping there. So in addition to the sweet ride and Death Star 
stool. The Space Pavilion will also be getting a new restaurant, which I believe you can see them building right there. Called Space 220. Where guests take a space elevator up to a space station and out the viewports will supposedly have a real-time view of orbiting the Earth while they eat their food. Oh, I can almost smell that food. Oh my gosh. Hungry. Now way over across the park. Over in what will now be world nature. All that we really know so far is that the land pavilion is getting a new film called Awesome Planet. Which let's face it sounds awesome. I don't have anything really concrete yet about them replacing the seas pavilion or on getting an updated figment ride in imagination. But we still have two years before the big 40th anniversary so who knows. Hopefully we'll see the dream finder return in a brand new attraction. And speaking of brand new attractions. There will be a brand new one coming to world nature. Somewhere right about yeah. Epcot's new feature, Journey of Water, inspired by Moana. Now it's not a ride, it's being described as an exploration trail. None of us have any idea what that really means yet, but supposedly we'll get to meet and play with magical living water. The concept artwork is all still very mysterious, but trust me, anything with water at Epcot, which on days like today gets very Epcot, is going to be very popular. Now speaking of concept artwork, there's some argument as to where exactly this Moana thing is going, but it looks like if you really zoom in at this future Epcot rendering, that it's replacing Communicor West. So to put it in context for you, the land is behind me, Imagination is over there, there's the current entrance to the center of Epcot, and Moana should be right around there. That's why some sources have been arguing whether it's part of world nature over here, or if it's going to really be part of world celebration, which is the new name for everything in the center. From Spaceship Earth all the way out to World Showcase. Most likely I think it'll be part of world nature, but serve as sort of a transition between world celebration here and world nature in the background, which will be much more visible when they take down this Communicor building. Crazy to think that all this will be gone and opened up. It is really going to highlight and showcase those pavilions back there. No word yet on whether Communicore East is going to get the axe eventually. But the west side we know for sure is going away and any time now. Anyway, the fine details about World Celebration, this whole center part, are sort of still to be announced. But we do know that along with the entrance, Spaceship Earth itself is slated for a huge makeover. With not just new refresh scenes, new narration, and a new soundtrack. But apparently a whole narrative shift where instead of telling the story of communication, the ride will now focus on the story of storytelling. Supposedly they'll also be adding some kind of magic light to the ride that will somehow or another guide us through the story of stories. It seems like somewhat of a minor change, but really it's sort of a metaphor for what's happening all over Epcot. The shift from the history and showcasing of progress and technology to more of a storytelling experience. Again, details are still sort of fuzzy right now, but hopefully that means we get a new finale in there. Because as much as I wouldn't mind it staying the same forever. Gotta admit, kind of a missed opportunity with that whole long black hallway at the end there. Alright, now World Celebration is not just changing some things and demolishing others, but also building new things as well. In the future after you exit from Spaceship Earth, you'll be at Dreamer's Point, which will roughly be this whole area over here. Not sure how much it's gonna tie into the Moana thing over there, but there's supposed to be an enchanted forest and a wishing tree, and the star attraction, the anchor if you will, a brand new statue of Walt Disney himself. Now as a fan of all things Walt, I think that is swell. Contrarians will like to tell you that Epcot is nothing like Walt Disney's original vision for a futuristic utopian city. But what they won't tell you, or maybe they just don't know, is that every other utopian futurist housing project like that of that time period, with very few exceptions, was a colossal failure. So, personally I think old Walt Disney might have dodged the proverbial bullet on that one. Alright, now for the biggest thing they're building in World Celebration. It's not all just ride changes and gardens. They're also planning on building a massive new structure. Basically right over in this area right here. Somewhat between the modern club cool and the monorail tracks. I believe as yet unnamed to serve as the hub and center or sort of headquarters if you will for all the different festivals they have at Epcot. The thing looks pretty darn large in the concept artwork. I mean zoom in and look at that. Compare it to mouse gear across the hallway there. It's gargantuan.
gargantuan. Dude, this thing is impressive. Not just the look and the design, which reminds me very much of the 1964 World's Fair, which was a massive influence on Walt Disney and his team, and of course, the design of Epcot in the first place. But you can also see they have a rooftop garden up there, so finally, there's gonna be a place to get a good bird's eye view of Epcot. Which will also be perfect for viewing the brand new fireworks shows coming to the park. Wow, I'm just thinking of exactly how crazy different the landscape is going to look standing from right over here. It's gonna be one heck of a change. As much as I've gotten to know and love this Epcot, and as much as I know there's a strong contingent of old school fans, mostly in an older age bracket than me, who are very defensive and touchy about any little scratch they make to Epcot. Personally, I think all the changes they've announced sound pretty awesome. Especially for first time and younger guests who really don't understand the original concept of the thing. I mean, for me, as a former 80s kid, coming here and seeing what's left of 80s futurism is awesome. But as much as my son likes Epcot, he doesn't really understand I feel like a lot of the crankiest old school fans just really don't understand that. But as a parent, I get it. And I think it's really cool that Disney is investing so much into making sure that Epcot's gonna be blowing people's minds and creating family memories for generations to come. Now, by the way, the vast majority of the changes we've been discussing will, from what I understand, soon be on display in the Odyssey over here. It's going to open up here October 1st as Walt Disney Imagineering presents the Epcot Experience. Now, from everything I've seen so far, it looks like they're gonna set up that giant interactive model they had at D23 inside of here to showcase the upcoming changes. And if the rumors are true, hopefully in a month have all that new sweet Epcot gear. Ah, now speaking of the changes, we have got to move on to the World Showcase. And I'm running out of time, so I gotta pick up the World Show pay. So far, it looks like both the China and Canada pavilions are going to get new movies in their theaters. Wondrous China will be a brand new seamless 360 film, which sounds like it's gonna be awesome, although it does make me a little sad that they're replacing my old buddy Lee Bai. Bye-bye, Lee Bai. Bye-bye. <laughs> Lee Bai, bye-bye. The film over in Canada. Some people's home and my dad's native land will be called Canada Far and Wide. The name of both a Parks Canada show and a series of Canadian postage stamps. Whether or not they still use Martin Short, unknown. Now coming up any time now here in the World Showcase Lagoon, the fan favorite and long running Illuminations Reflections of Earth show will be going away forever. First to replace by a show called Epcot Forever, which is supposed to run through 2020, and then by a dazzling new fireworks show called Harmonia. It's supposed to be massive. They're saying it's the biggest one ever created for any park. With giant floating set pieces, LEDs, and supposedly a gigagazillion fireworks. Now by now, most people have heard of the Ratatouille ride coming to France at Epcot. From everything I've seen so far, by and large, it looks like it's gonna be pretty much the same as the Ratatouille ride we visit in Disneyland Paris. They're also getting a new creperie restaurant. La Creperie de Paris. And apparently joining, but not replacing, the Impressions de France film will be a Beauty and the Beast sing-along. Pretty soon this pavilion's gonna be more fun than real France. Then again, maybe I just feel that way because last time I was in France, I got tear gas, you remember. Oh yeah, look at that expansion. Someone tell Sleeping Beauty the rats are coming. Whoa, whoa. Anyway, near but not in France is something else that's new. The fancy new Disney Skyliner system. Which will drop guests off right at the back entrance to the World Showcase. I think they put them away for the hurricanes, but we did see them testing them the other day and they look pretty cool. I mean, kind of scary if you're nervous about heights like me, but pretty cool. All right, last but not least is something they just announced last week. Something that has me more excited. <gasps> Sick pick! than anything else. Right here at Epcot, back in their Great Britain Pavilion, Disney has confirmed that finally, after a lifetime of waiting, we will be able to visit number 17, Cherry Tree Lane. That's right, we're getting a Mary Poppins attraction. The first ever Mary Poppins attraction in the world. No one knows for sure exactly where it'll be, but the concept artwork really makes it look like it's located right about here. Most Mostly just because of the way that last building on the right looks a lot like this building here in real life. Combined with the way the park would be right across the street. Mary Poppins has a lot of meet and greets back here already. Mainly it's just a theory. I have had the hugest crush on Mary Poppins my whole life, so when I first saw the poster, I flipped. And even though the concept artwork pretty clearly shows Lampy McLighty and the Emily Blunt Mary Poppins from the newer movie, I'm hoping the ride is kind of a hybrid so we still get birds, some Julie Andrews songs, maybe Uncle Albert. I love to laugh. Ha, ha, ha.
Oh, maybe some penguins? One thing's for sure, it's pretty darn clear we're gonna get some Admiral Boom! And we actually enter the ride through the Banks' front door! How sweet is that? Now remember, it's just a theory that it'll be back there. After all, the space they'll probably build the ride in is between Britain and Canada. Where this big world showplace building is now. So it could be we don't get to see the Banks' house until we go inside a different building. Anyway, as you've seen, so many crazy changes. And I didn't even have time to mention the cool throwback logos they unveiled. At D23. Or talk about the very strong rumor that there's going to be a Brazilian pavilion added to World Showcase. It wouldn't be unheard of. After all, they added plenty of countries after the fact. And let's not forget, a lot of Brazilians visit Epcot. Plus, there's other rumors. Like a new figment ride or the rumor that they're going to totally tear down and replace the Living Seas Pavilion. Could be, could be. There's no way to know for sure yet. The only thing we do know for sure is that after these spicy shrimp, I'm very thirsty. And this is my last chance chance ever to get a drink. Because along with all the awesome, amazing, good changes coming to Epcot is one change that's just a little sad. Club Cool is closing forever. Remember, all of Communicore West is being deleted for that Moana thing and for that new pavilion. And Club Cool is right in the way. I have loved this place ever since my very first visit to Disney World. It was just so awesome after a lifetime of waiting to finally be part of the Cool Club. Well, wow, and the free sodas didn't hurt either. Oh, my favorite. Mm. I have always loved the cool, funky, weird dated party vibes in here. The weird, grabby free soda atmosphere. The strange, funky music beats. I have a lot of good memories of this place. We are now entering the party zone. Oh yeah, this is the good stuff. My friends are all gone and I'm all alone, but I can still party in the party zone. All the Nobody drinks are told gone. me there was a party. No snacks. Were you part of the party zone? No. You missed the party zone. I missed the party Didn't zone. Did you get the memo? No. Ding dang. Watch out, guys. Someone just joined the cool club. The one and only Club Cool. Oh, yeah. It's bumping tonight. Party! Nobody wants to party. All alone? in the party zone. Uh -huh. even tempted to have a sip of Beverly in memory of all the, oh. <laughs> looks like I can. They have fresh out. Looks like Beverly is still Neverly. Look at my arm. It's more melon frosting. Oh, yeah. We're finally in the cool club. You try it and give us the honest reaction from the mouths of babes. Emma, don't, don't do something. I can't get. See, so yeah, at first it's a, uh, are you kidding me? Uh, what you doing, Allie? Getting one more sip of Beverly for the road? What you getting? Oh, typical. Time to go where all the cool kids go. It's never that bad of... Oh, hold on. Oh, that's so... <laughs> that's so gross. It's making me gag. You okay? It hurts the back of my throat. It hurts my soul. Oh, you remember the parties on Yeah, the cool guys are heading to Club forgotten. Cool. How could I forget? Oh, the music's bumping. Don't look now, but look what's behind us. It's the party zone. The party zone. Why haven't they erected a plaque here? Party! The party zone. There's no music. Okay, that just got really awkward. Awkward. I honestly didn't think I was going to get a chance to make it back here before Club Cool closed. I'm glad I made it just in the nick of time, but it's crazy to think that in less than one week, the party will be over for everyone forever. I mean, technically, Epcot said they're going to move, quote-unquote, elements of it to another area. Which I assume means there'll be another club pool eventually. But it won't be the same. The faded flags. The 90s party colors. The funky little tables. And weird cloth discs on the wall. It's all happening too fast, Allie. Well, we've got a buck up. We should be grateful. We got one last roam in the party zone. All right. One last time of kuat. Uh, one last squirt of Inca Cola. Uh, Yep, tastes like I remember. Ugh, made from real Incas or koalas or something. One last round of Sparletta. Uh -huh, uh -huh. That's one zesty Sparberry. All right, all right. Some more Bebo. We're going to pound down one last round of Bebo. Why does that always taste like salad? 
one last drizzle of Vegeta beta, or as I like to call it, what the heck were the Japanese thinking when they made this beta? Mm. Well, uh, apricot. Apricot, I'd rather not. The greatest beverage in Club Cool history. Mm. The greatest beverage in Club Cool history, according to Owie. Oh. And last but not least, no. No! Anything but that! I swore I would never drink Beverly again! That's why I call it Neverly! But the party zone is going down! Oh no, the urge to drink it is rising! I hate Beverly with my whole heart! And ever since I set the first record with that first Beverly challenge, this stuff makes me instantly gag! Well, that record, by the way, has been way beaten. Someone's up in the 20s and 30s of cups now as the record. No thank you. I told the dude, you can have the record! I never I never ever wanted to put this stuff in my mouth again. But if the party zone is closing forever, then I have no choice. I have to have the full spectrum, the full party. And that includes Beverly. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. It's not that bad at first, honestly. It's a, uh, that, that. <laughs> Oh. Ah. oh my god. <laughs> That's why it's never leaving. Help me, Owie. I need another drink. Ah, stop. <sighs> oh gosh. I legit almost threw up in the party zone. But you know what? It was kind of worth it. Because for one last time, of them all, I've done my duty. Now all that's left to do is pick up our drinks and Please tell me he's alive. Is he alive? Oh my god. He survived! He's right by that tiny snail! Oh my god! This is the best day ever! Tiny fiance, tiny frog, tiny snail! We're in tiny land! It's so cute! I hope it wasn't important! Everyone loves the stupid frogs. Wow. Nobody loves snails. Oh my gosh, can't believe I almost forgot about the talking trash can! Ouch! Thank you. Hey, it's mine! It's mine! It's mine! Hey, dude, like your trash is totally awesome! This is my lucky day. French fries. What are you doing? What are you doing? Stop that! I ought to be 
me that salami? Cool. Thank you. This is what you never see in the main episode. It has rained about 18,561 times while I've been filming today. In between every other sentence. The rain cometh. We It just keeps raining and raining. And the sun is shining and it's raining. And now it's time to go get cool. Come Finally, we're going to be cool. They have drinks in here. They have beverages. Free beverages. Oh, the air conditioning. <laughs> Look at all the cool people in Club Cool. So hot. Adam, 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 if you're hot, we'll never be cool. They should change the name of this place to Club Cool of Sweat. Uh, the party zone? I like the sound of that. I don't have my Florida shirt. Dang it. Do not invite it. I like how it's like, it does feel like a club in here right now. You done with that yet? Oh, gnarly, bro. Oh, you crushed it. You're killing it, bro. Crushing it. <laughs> Watch me shoot my, shoot my <laughs> Extreme! Extreme! <laughs> it's the party zone! Yeah! Party! Hey, you walk the store and send by a thread. This is the Epcot, the magic of Epcot. The wonderful Epcot. Waiting for you. They're gonna change it. Will they hide bucket? I do not think so. What will they do? Epcot will change. It's changing. Oh my gosh, it's changing so much. Will it be awesome? Or weird or will it be real lame? Be a real lame? I don't think it will be lame. It will probably be cool. I think it might rule. Ba 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 ba. Ba ba ba. Epcot. The wonderful Epcot. Not much rhymes with Epcot. I should have thought of this before I started. Before I started. Now I can't finish. This is the 